From the womb to the tomb, last week we talked about being God's workmanship. All of us sitting here today, we're God's workmanship. One of the things I appreciate about the Lee family, they didn't let society determine who is doing the work in them. And they allowed God to continue to do work in them. And then we're sitting here today because of that. Let's go to the next slide. The, the, the title of today's message, I kind of just got it under the, the womb to the tomb series. And it's study to show yourself approved. And what God wants us to understand here today, that he is working out uh, a growth process in all of us. And let's pray into this. Heavenly Father, we just thank you that you began a good work in us. We'll be faithful to complete it. Lord, we just thank you that you are training us up. You are bringing a, 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 a learning process that we're to study because your knowledge is vast. Your knowledge is never ending. And there's not a person sitting in here today that you don't desire for them to acquire knowledge, acquire education, and study and work hard at learning more about you every day. Jesus, we ask for your grace in today's message as we apply our minds to understand even greater things in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. There's a, in, the, in the message yesterday, or last night, at the, um, Dr. Tony Evans said there's really two things that God commanded men to do. One is to study God and his word. And the other one, for men, is to study women. And that is to get to know them. And, it is, it, and really, the four, first one is what we're focusing on here today, is God's command is to study, for us is to study his word. If we're not centering our life on his word, we're going to be taking shots out here at, 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 at this, trying this out here, trying this over here, trying that over there, trying this down here, trying that over there, and just thinking if I could just understand this, I'll be enlightened. Satan wants our mind to go everywhere, but staying centered on the Word of God. And you'll see it more in our society than any other time. When I first got saved, it's about 30 years ago now. This year is 30 years when I got saved. When I first got saved, um, there was a, a, a Bible study that we were attending. It was, it was on the New Age movement. And some of you remember Shirley MacLaine, who was out on a limb, right? And this whole idea is that it's almost like you got the spiritual life within you, that you just need to find your inner self, that, that everything else is whatever someone wants to believe is okay as long as you don't offend or, or interfere with what somebody else wants to believe. That's the devil's theology. And so let's get into some of the things that God told, taught, talked to us about or taught us. Um, the Christian, it says, here's the passage, is to study the shoe the self approved. Now, this is the King James Version. We're going to break it down a little bit. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor. neighbor. Let's break this down a little bit. Because most people, how many of you got that verse memorized? Study to show yourself approved, right? Most of us now just say, show yourself approved. Not too many of us say, shoe, right? But let's get, take a look at 2 Timothy. Here's how it breaks down. It goes like this. Next slide. It says, do your best, okay, in NIV version, it reads like this. Same verse, it says, do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a workman who does not need to be ashamed, but who correctly handles the word of truth. Let's go to the next slide. It says, the Greek word translated study in the King James Version means to give diligence or to exert oneself, to make haste to apply oneself. Therefore, in order to educate ourselves, we must apply ourselves to study with diligence the Word of God. So that's kind of a breakdown of where you get the text. What is God? God wants us to seek Him. Why does God want us to seek Him? Because there is a reward there. If, if, if love doesn't have a choice, it isn't love. The reason we have to seek God and find God is because we have a choice to make. Do we want to really know the love of God? He's not going to force, us on it, force it on us, right? But if you really want to know God, you're going to press in and get to know him. That is what the devil is going to try. How many of you know the hardest thing to do sometimes? Just sit down. How many will go through day after day? Well, I just didn't have any time to read my Bible today, right? How many times do we say that, right? Yeah, well, we check out every social media connection we have. Man, we spend hours doing that, right? Yet God is trying to connect with us on a daily basis. Is it really true that we don't have time to spend to read our Bibles? No, that we, we're lying to ourselves. 
So we might as well just get right about the same thing. We have time every day to read the Bible. I don't care how busy you are. You have time. We have time to study or know the Word of God. If we don't do that, Martin Luther King said this, uh, or not Martin, Martin Luther, not Martin Luther King, but Martin Luther said this, um, the one that, uh, as a result, we got the Lutheran Church, or, uh, he was trying to revive the old Catholic Church, but he said this, if I don't give God the first two hours of my day, the devil gets to rest. I promise you that God will redeem the time that you spend in his word to get to know him. So let's study so that the devil doesn't get the rest of the day, okay? That's how we do that. Doesn't mean you're not going to have difficulties. All right, next, next word's fine. Our slide, Matthew says, now here's the, the, the command that Jesus has to it. If we're supposed to study and to, to show ourselves approved, the command that Jesus said was to go, right? Turn to your neighbor and say, you're supposed to go. You're supposed to go. And that doesn't mean, like, get out of here. That means we're supposed to, well, we get here today. If we walk out the doors and we go, but no, go with the intention of what God intended to, for us to do, we're missing our responsibility. That's like telling the kid to go to the store to get sugar or a bag of flour or whatever, and they come back with nothing or come back with something they wanted. Us as Christians do this every day. This passage says, go, Jesus said, I, all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. It's been given to who? Jesus, right? It's been given to who? Jesus. First off, you got to know who has the authority. The authority is in Jesus Christ. That's why that marriage seminar was so strong yesterday, because it talked about the authority of aligning ourselves with God and that we cannot escape that. And when we get outside of that, it leaves ourselves exposed to the enemy. Jesus says he has all authority. All authority. In heaven and on earth. Not just in heaven, but on earth as well. So then why is all hell breaking loose in our world and in our society? Because the devil is at work. See, if, 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 if love, if, if, if there was a, if, if love, love wouldn't be love if it didn't have a choice. You understand that? Even though the devil is there trying to uh, wreak havoc, to steal, kill, and destroy, greater is Jesus because he has all authority. Correct? If we call on the name of the Lord. Because this is just like walking through a minefield. But we know if we keep walking, Jesus is on the other side. Stay confident, stay faithful, stay focused on the things of God because you're, what we're walking through here, expect to walk through a minefield, but you are indestructible if you are in Christ Jesus. It says all authority in heaven and earth is in Jesus. So you want, you want to be aligned with all the authority in heaven and earth? Get aligned with Jesus. Therefore it says go, therefore what? Go, therefore what? Go, actually maybe a better, better rendering of this would be, as you go, make disciples. What are you supposed to do? Make disciples. What are you supposed to do? Make disciples. See, you thought your job was in this world was to make enough money to pay your bills, to live a happy life. Our responsibility is to make, make disciples. So then we got to ask ourselves, well, how successful am I am at what I'm even here for? If we're supposed to make disciples, how, how successful have I been? How many disciples have I produced? Yeah. Our responsibility is to make disciples, not just to get a paycheck, not just to, to, to have fun and enjoy life. Like the author, the author, Dr. Tony Evans, was saying yesterday, our happiness is masked sometimes, and this is a, maybe I'm more paraphrasing, sometimes, uh, or masks the true reason why we're here. A lot of times we think we're just here to be, we're, we just want to live a happy life. The whole new age movement is, well, don't interfere with anybody else's happiness. But yet we're supposed to go and make disciples. It says, make disciples. What happens when, what does is, what is word make mean? Does that mean don't try to influence them? Our society says don't try to influence anybody. Yet Jesus said, make disciples. Make is influencing. We can't be in our society and make disciples if we're not trying to influence them. Do you understand what I'm saying? It might take your actions of how you live. It might take the word of God. There's going to be a lot of things that God will use to help you make disciples. But the very first thing that we got to do is we got to want to be a disciple. Let's go. To, uh, actually, wait. I want to finish this. So make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them 
whatever they flipping want to hear. Is that what it says? No, that's how we live to a lot of us. Well, you know, I'm not going to tell them. They don't want to hear that. It says teaching them to obey what they want to obey. It says teaching them to obey what? Everything. Well, if they want to do it that way, that's up to them. That's fine, but just let them know the consequences. Yes. You know, the, 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 probably within the last year, God has kind of given me that we're so focused and on our world, so focused on allowing people just to be happy, we'd rather see somebody happily going to hell than interfere with that happiness. How would you feel if the bridge was out and as you're falling off over the cliff and you just drove your car over the edge because all your friends thought you going 80 miles an hour looked like you were having a lot of fun. They didn't want to interfere with you. They took all the signs down that said the bridge was out, actually removed all the barriers and all the signs, and then all of a sudden saw you plunging over your death. Why? Well, they were having so much fun going 80 miles an hour. That's us as Christians if we're not telling people the bridge is out. Happy Happiness for some people is taking them over the cliff, plunging them to their death. See, there's a difference. Holiness, when you align yourself with God's holiness, you can't feel no better than anything in the world when you align yourself with God. You want to feel something good? Align yourself with God's holiness. And this is what Jesus is saying. Hey, guess what? He said, you're supposed to go as you go, make disciples. As you go, teach them to obey everything. Well, no, they don't want to hear that. Well, is there any wonder that all the disciples were all but John died martyrs? Well, I ain't trying to die a martyr. I, 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 you know what? I'm just, I'm just trying not to offend anybody. How I many you know that Satan has raised offense in this off the charts in our country, right? My favorite meme is the guy that uh, he's running for his life and there's a whole bunch of angry mob chasing him. And, and then it's like, what'd you do? What'd you do? He's like, I shared my opinion. <laughs> Everybody gets offended about everything, yet they let the Word of God just fall by the wayside. You know where the biggest offense is going to come? When people are plunging to their death on the other side and looking back and knew you had the answer. How heated would you be if you're plunging, well, that's a, if you're plunging into hell, you'd be pretty heated. But I mean, if you're plunging to the other side and you're looking back and all your friends are like, oh yeah, I knew, I knew, and they're waving from heaven. That's some of us. Some of us are going to be waving from heaven when we never said anything to those that are plunging to their, their spiritual death on the other side. That's our command. Let's go to the next slide. What are you teaching? John uh, 7, 16, Jesus answered, my teaching is not my own. Some people in here and some people out there that profess to be Christians, you're probably teaching what you think. And as a result, it's, there's a, going to be a passage up here. Basically, it resorts to nothing less than doctrines of demons. Jesus even said, if Jesus has to say, my teaching is not of my own, then what are we saying? Right? It's just like the sign that says, uh, the bridge is out, you move it to say, the bridge might be out. Or travel at your own risk. Big difference in the bridge is out and travel at your own risk, right? And some of us like to change the signs to say what, what we feel that that should be. Jesus said, my teaching is not my own. We, if we're going to see the world get saved, we got to give people truth. The truth sets people free. free. Let's go to the next slide. Proverbs says the teaching that of, of the wise is a fountain of what? Life. Your teaching can be a fountain of life. Turning a man from the snares of death. Let's go to the next slide. Are we teachable? That, now here's the question is are we even teachable? See, in order for you to be a teacher, the, the, the Word of God comes out so messed up on the other side that we're not even teachable ourselves. It says, I would not obey my teachers or listen to my instructors. I have come to the brink of utter ruin. We have to be teachable. How many know in today's society, the devil, or even in your own spirit sometimes, maybe it wasn't even like that years ago, but you maybe see it progressively sometimes getting worse, where people get offended and sometimes you even say, when somebody tries to tell you something, you get a little agitated, like, man, don't tell me anything, right? right? Satan is trying to raise up people's aggression against God's ordained truth. And he sometimes even does it within us. We can all probably tell the time when we got irritated when somebody tried to tell us something, right? For some, 
That was the key to life. And Satan is going to be right there to try to make it destructive, seem destructive in your life, rather than the life-giving Word of God. Let's not, let's be teachable, right? Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. Pray, for me. pray for me. I need to be teachable. I need to be teachable. Let's go to the next slide. It says, are we using Scripture effectively? Second Timothy says, all Scripture is God-breathed and is useful for what? Teaching. Teaching. Rebuking, correcting, and training in what? Right. Righteousness. So that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. You guys, we can't avoid reading the Word of God. You know one thing that I learned about the Lee family, especially as I first got here? I saw his, his mom leading a prayer meeting at their home. And his dad, at that time, his dad was there. And maybe he wasn't there earlier on, but when when the, got closer to the, the end of his life, they were there, and that they were focusing the Word of God and prayer. Our responsibility is use Scripture and let it rebuke us, let it correct us, let it train us in righteousness. That's what Scripture is supposed to do. The world wants to say, oh, come on, the, 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 there's no absolutes. Do what's best for you, as long as you're happy. Do you know how people came to me and said that they were going to do something that was totally in, the, in opposition to the Lord and just said, well, God would want me to be happy. No, God wants you to be holy because out of the holiness you see an alignment with God and fulfillment comes like no happiness can ever do. Yes. Satan is going to try to steer you away from God's holiness and fulfillment by little, little, little rendezvous of happiness that lead into de deception and distraction from the real love of God. Let's allow ourselves to use Scripture effectively. Can we do that? And then when you do that, can you understand that when you... When I read my Bible every day, do you know sometimes I feel rebuked? Sometimes I feel corrected? Sometimes I feel like I'm getting trained. If you don't feel that when you read the Bible, you're probably not trying to get everything out of the Bible. Why? Because our spirits want... Our, our, our spirit wants that from the Word of God, but our flesh wants a fight in opposition of it. Don't hear I don't want to hear that. Let's use the scripture effectively. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor. neighbor. Let's, use Let's use scripture effectively. Let's go to the next slide. It says, do I proclaim God's word? First Timothy said, uh, Paul's telling Timothy, preach the word, be prepared. Turn to your neighbor and be, be prepared. Be prepared. In season and out of season. In season and out of season. And is reminding Timothy to correct, rebuke, and encourage with great patience and careful instruction. Now, there's some that we as Christians need, and this is something I need sometimes, is maybe greater patience and careful instruction. Because um, sometimes we just want to say, turn or burn, baby, you know, you got to get it right. <laughs> so let's pray for better patience and careful instruction. Let's go to the next slide. Do I maintain sound doctrine? It says, for a time will come when men will not put up with sound, what? Doctrine. Instead, suit their own desires. They will gather around them a group of numbering, a number of teachers, a great number of teachers, to say what their itching ears want to hear. They will turn their ears away from truth and turn aside to myths. But you, turn your neighbor and say, but you, but you keep your head, keep your head. In, all, in all situations. <laughs> See, the devil's going to try to get us to get off of what our itching ears want to hear. I mean, no Christians, you know what we're good at sometimes? We're finding somebody that's making the same sinful choices that we are, and then we feel better about ourselves. You ever do that? You ever do that? You ever just like, that's what our challenge was yesterday in our, our marriage seminar, was that let's, the world is watching Christian marriages. Let's do our best to make sure that we are representing what a godly marriage should look like. Because there's all these worldly people or, or people that are trying to find loopholes and not obey God. And even us sometimes, well, yeah, but look at that marriage. They're still married and they do, da, 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 you know. There's one thing after another we can list. Let us, let us be the ones that will be on sound doctrine. You, we, see, we see denomination after denomination rejecting sound doctrine because it's the politically correct thing to do, whatever that might be right now. And our church has always had a, a problem with that in America. 
I mean, you just won't look at just the foundation of uh, what we're talking about with uh, civil rights. That would never have been an issue if we just stayed centered on the Word of God, right? Would you agree? So if it's not one issue, Satan's going to create another issue to get us away from sound doctrine. But us, let us, again, remind your neighbor. Neighbor, neighbor. keep your head. In all situations. Let's go to the next one. Studying to show yourself approved. What am I or what am I listening to and teaching? Paul tells Timothy, the Spirit clearly says in a later time some will abandon the faith and follow deceiving spirits and things taught by demons. Some of the things that we've seen throughout our society, throughout all generations, Satan will always Paul saying this two thousand years ago. If he's saying this 2,000 years ago, every society since that time has demons trying to teach doctrine in the church. Paul's saying this 2,000 years ago. He isn't just talking to the church of 2,000 even though we are here right now and facing issues that are doctrines of demons that we've got to stay centered in the Word of God. It's important to be in the Word of God. If you don't know, remember when Eve in the garden, Eve, Eve was deceived because Eve really didn't know. Adam standing there and he disobeyed because he knew. Let's not get deceived and disobey. Let's learn the word of God and obey and walk with God. Amen? Can we do that? Yeah. What am I listening to and what am I teaching? Let's not get into doctrines of demons, okay? Let's go to the next slide. Here's a question. Let's uh, get the praise and worship team back up here. Let's all stand. Let's all stretch it out a little bit here. And let the Holy Spirit speak into our lives. If you want to be a healthy person, if you want to be a healthy person, from the womb to the tomb, first thing is, we got to know that we are God's workmanship. There's not a person sitting in here today. We, we, we emphasized that last week. Know that you're God's workmanship. He hasn't forgotten about you. He's not left you out. You are his workmanship. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. He loves you independently of everybody else in this group. Everybody. He has only one DNA match for you. That is his love signature in your life. So the next thing that we want to do is we need to study to show ourselves approved. It means let's get into knowing what this relationship with God is all about. And as we do that, there's three things that we need to ask ourselves. Do I diligently study the Word of God? Do I diligently study, study it? Or is it kind of like I just get into it a little bit, just enough to make me satisfy my, my, my self-guilt or something like that? Second thing is, do, we, do I diligently live out the Word of God? Not what society says, but do I diligently live out the Word of God? If we, if throughout this, the beginning of time, or seven, especially from the born again time of Jesus being born again, raised from the dead, and we have been, by the power of the Holy Spirit, born again, if from that time of the New Testament 2,000 years ago, how much different would life be in our world? If the world would get it and diligently live by the Word of God. What would our families look like? What would your family look like? What kind of peace would you have coming into the office or work tomorrow when everyone else is acting unsaved and you already, you're just going to live out the Word of God and just have peace? That's different, right? That's different. Third thing is, am I, do I diligently teach the Word of God? Diligently teach. As we teach the Word of God, that's like putting the, the, the street signs out to say, take a right here or take a left there. We're, we're, we have access to the GPS, God's positioning system for the world. But a lot of us are choosing to turn our, our GPS off or not wanting to turn it on for other people. There's a lot of lost people in the world. Do you know how easy it is to just turn on their GPS? Turn on their GPS. But we have to study to show ourselves approved. Amen? That means we have to really be honest with, why am I not studying? Do I really study the Word of God? Why not? Then identify why not, and then make the change. It's so easy right now with smartphones because the Bible is right there, in your hand. But you know, with that in your hand is what? Everything else. All your social media, right? All the other things that come with it. Any kind of media. But that's supposed to be that way. You know why? 
Because now you got a choice. You got a choice to choose the love of God. God isn't just giving you one Bible app on your phone and then everything else got canceled out. He's saying, no, choose me. That's love. Love is saying, choose me. And let's do that. So let's, let's diligently study the Word of God. Let's diligently live out the Word of God. Do you know everybody that you know that if you call yourself a Christian, they're going to be, they're not going to read their Bible, they're going to read us. Oh, this person lives like that. They're a Christian and they live like this. Right? And would you agree? How many of we even do that sometimes? We already know what the Word of God says and we see this other Christian living like this and we're like, ah, oh, they're still alive and they, they don't live like that. Let's align ourselves. You want to live your best life now? You want to live your best life now? Study the scripture to show yourself approved and live in alignment with God. That's your best life now. The world's going to tell you about everything else. Let's get aligned with the Word of God. Amen?